Morning, morning, everybody. Michelle is here. Ooh, on this Wednesday, March the 20th, 2024. What you say? I thought I'd get up real early. I'm um, real early. I thought I'd get up, and I want this on a Wednesday, as I hope last said that. I want to get up and talk about something that's um that's happening um with a certain event that happened back in the they, I'm not even sure when these events happen, but it's it's that term of freak meat, freak meat in Atlanta. That you, that that type of, uh, in my opinion, uh, it was a cultural event, to say the least. And uh, I may have gone there during that time before it was uh, discontinued, maybe three times. Okay, one at one time with a particular type of group of people. Again, and the next time with a particular type of different group of people. And then the last time, I think I went there by myself. Okay? And there was a reason for that. Uh, <laughs> you know, to say the least. Um, that's why you do. And it's so funny. You do have to pay attention to the company you keep. Because I'm not sure why this, I mean, why this is causing such a disturbance for a lot of people. The releasing of this documentary about Freak Me. Freak in, freak out, and ski, baby, baby. That's what they used to say back then. That's what I remember from the clubs. But let me just tell you about, so, like I said, I'm not sure uh, what the issue is with what's really going on. I don't know what's going to be in the documentary. And it's so funny, I don't remember that anybody was recording anything. And see, that's that's what we are up against you know, with our patterns and behaviors and our behaviors and actions. You never know who's watching you. And that's why I'm, I'm doing this for young people, you know, just to, to, to illustrate for, to you what can happen to you based on your patterns, behaviors, or your behaviors and actions. <clears throat> Apparently, I, because I don't have streaming service. I don't have, uh, I just have a, I don't, I'm not in a contract with the streaming service. I don't have cable. The thing, what I use is just the internet, you know, the free services that's offered on the internet and sometimes free s streaming services. Um, you know, I, I just don't, I just don't want that kind of entertainment right now. I, there's enough going on. And not to mention, you know, I got, I, I have things to do. And I was at one point, like I said, I don't know if I said this, but I was addicted to streaming service. I was ad addicted to the reality shows. I was addicted to this and that and the other. Okay. And so I had to peel myself away from that stuff. And you know, that's a recovery in itself. <laughs> and so now I do, I know how to manage myself with that. I just don't know how I had the time to do it, to sit there and watch all of those reality, you know, binge watching, watching all of those reality shows and still able to function and get my life you know, apparently pay my bills and da 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 da. You know, I did run into some some financial mis um, irresponsible financial issues, definitely, um, and everything else that I've that I've shared <laughs> on my channel. I've shared a lot, and so that's why I say you do. You have to take the time to get to know me, just just like you need to take the time to get to know anybody else. But let me just say something about this freak me experience for me. Um, I thought it was a great experience because I handled myself accordingly. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't do anything that I felt embarrassed about. Put it that way. Um, I I met some I met some interesting people, and I remember meeting this really um, fascinating person uh, one year. And this person, uh, you know sorted me out. I was just there with a whole group of people, you know, just to watch it. Like I do, which I love to do is just sitting around and watching people, people watching and you know, um, I was with this with the group of people that, you know I mean, we've been hanging around with each other for a while there was some tension there because uh, I dated one of them, but we managed to remain friends I, you know, I had no ill wills against this person, but Apparently, this person used to listen to the group that we were, the group that I was with, this particular person that was there, you know, we was just going to enjoy 
you know, enjoy the culture. But there was tension there because, like I said, I had dated one of them. But we, I thought we were friends. I thought I could do whatever I want, and they, they certainly were doing whatever they wanted to do. Uh, and in my opinion, attempted to make me jealous, but it didn't work because, I mean, you know. So anyway, I remember going to, you know, a couple of places. I mean, I mean because I wasn't driving. So that's why I had to behave. Otherwise, because I've been, uh, a lot of people have threatened to kick me out of their vehicles before. <laughs> and some have. <laughs> so I behaved. When I mean behaved, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't cause, I, I didn't get, I didn't respond to all the tension going on. And, they, you know, everybody's, uh, because they, you know, this group that I was with, it's like I kind of, you know, the the person that I was dating, let's make this clear, that was that was her clique of people, and I was like a stranger coming in, okay, and I was I was treated that way throughout all everything going on, but anyway, so there was tension because they felt like I didn't fit in to their clique, so to speak, because. Um, you know, that's when everything started getting crazy in this, in the, uh, what they used to call it, the alternative lifestyle back then. Whereas um, they started separating people from masculine and feminine, which, which was crazy to me when you're talking about women. You know, the, all of these were women. And they started cr grabbing at titles of who's masculine, who's feminine, but they were using terms of stud and something else femme and stud or something to that you know creating massive confusion once again just as it's happening now in a major major way where uh we are attempting to uh interrupt or interfere with biology of what a man is and what a female is okay the same type of but this is more of an extremism what we are facing right now is extremism and it was starting back then that I didn't recognize that. And so I didn't know what the problem was. I mean, if some, if, if I was attracted to someone, I would, you know, I would just approach them and, and let them know. But, but then that was becoming a problem. It's like, no, you're, you're not, you're not masculine enough or, you know, and, and, and you know, all this kind of what, you know, it just made me kind of crazy. But anyway, so when I was, I remember being there at a, at a, at a because that's, as I said, I was traveling along with this group of people did not, who did not want me there. Okay. But I was there. I was invited by this person that I was formerly dating to go. And I saw no problem going. I want to go. And so I went. And that's where I noticed all the tension and this and that. And it was just crazy. But anyway, I enjoy I, I I enjoyed the cold. It was it because it started out, if I'm not mistaken, as uh, uh, colleges, black colleges were were had uh, created it. I thought, you know, it was created for black college students. This event, because I I thought it was an event. I you know, and and I'm t I'm telling this for a reason because I know that the, I know the documentary is coming out. Apparently, this documentary is causing a lot of, you know, and I'm questioning why this documentary is being released if it's going to harm people, you know, and, um, you know, because everybody makes mistakes. You know, apparently there are some things in this documentary that no one wants to be, you know, because apparently there are high, high influencers and celebrities and this and that and the other that are afraid of what's going to be in the documentary because all I guess all they were putting out was uh, bits and pieces of it you know people doing the booty shaking and all that that's what it was called back then booty shaking I think yeah and now it's twerking I mean so like I said when I was there I felt the tension with the group I was with but not with the environment of the situation I thought it was a I, I for the most part enjoyed myself so that's why I decided to come back again by myself and then enjoy things that way. But when I came back 
the last time by myself, you saw that it was deteriorating. Tent, you know, it was it was becoming unsafe. Let's put it that way. Okay, that that's and so you know, and then it was it was gone. So the reason I'm talking about this is that we all need to give our story on this particular event before the documentary is released. If you can put your story out there and, 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 or just say, Hey, I made my mistakes. I've done some things that I might not have, you know, because like I said, I don't remember anybody filming. So my looks changed a lot throughout the course of, you know, decades, just like everybody else's look. So I know, I mean, I shouldn't say I know, but chances are, you know, and I'm not even concerned because like I said, I behave accordingly. Now the group and the clique that I was with, I have no idea. Okay, I don't know what their activities were because, like I said, they didn't want me there. But then the person that invited me wanted me there. It was like because I could care less if somebody likes me or not or wants me somewhere or not. But I just don't want to be. Vo I didn't want to ever, ever, and that's and that's the same way I am today. Ever be vulnerable? And what do I mean by that? Allowing someone else to control my transportation. That makes me very nervous. I usually like to control my transportation, meaning I want to be the one to decide whether I need to leave or not, and not to be just hanging with the group because that's what I felt like I was uh, like hanging on to them, you know. And um, because you know, I mean, that, that was my transportation. So I remember the experience is to be. A, I enjoyed myself. Because we were going all over the place, going to several events. You know, there was a house party here. There was a club party there. You know, that's what I remember. Let me think. Yeah. I just remember we were just everywhere to, to you know, I enjoyed the house parties. Because, you know, you can sit there and relax. and But then those became dangerous, at, at, you know, at some point. They started out, you know blah 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 so my point is this you know I don't know what they see that you always want to ask what's the intention and purpose of releasing this documentary is it to harm people is it to embarrass people um, because I think it's um, if you are recording people I think it, it, it ought to have been um, people ought to have known that that was going to be taking place. But, you know, and also back then, that's what people were doing. They had these cameras and they had these recording devices. And, you know, you cannot control too much of uh, what people are doing. But I don't know if that was, it was um, announced that, that that's what was happening. The people were being recorded. You know, and, some, and a lot of people were doing that for fun, you know, d dancing and booty shaking and all that for fun. And, you know, kind of because a lot of people performing with the camera. We know that when the camera is out, people start performing. Otherwise, people probably were just minding their own business. You know, I remember sitting out at having we were at a park, a well-known park over there, Piedmont Park. And I remember, you know, a lot of people used to I used to I love that, too. Just hanging out, picnicking, so to speak you know, laying around in the grass and stuff like that. And so I remembered all the places that I had gone. I don't remember any problems. I don't remember, uh, I, I knew the police were there. The police did a good job of, uh, to, to the best of their ability to control the traffic. But, you know, we're massively, massively overpopulated, even then. I mean, come on now. Uh, so, and cruising was, was popular, I remember. Going down, was that Peach Tree? I can't remember the street, Peach I think it was peach tree. And um, I just remember it was just massively, massively overpopulated. You know, I remember the music, you know, the fun with the music. In other words, I mean, I enjoyed it. Now, what people were doing behind the scenes, I have no idea. Okay. And um, I, I guess, it's you know, as I said, you know, your, your, your behaviors and actions will catch up to you. You know, there is a cause and effect. And you will reap what you've sown. So I think is a lot, what it is is a lot of high high end types, the, the influent 
those of high influence are feeling some type of uh, feeling some type of way apparently and they may have compromised themselves without their permission i can guarantee it you know no one they probably had no idea of people were filming in a, in a, such a way so i do remember great times and that's that's why i want people that had great times there to step up and say it I, like I said, I don't know what the impact of this documentary will will present to people, but I just don't remember the, that crowd back then behaving as the crowds are happening now. I, I, you know, the police, like I said, the police were there. The police controlled the, the traffic as best they could. I remember they used to have things roped off and we would be able to walk. I mean, it was a great experience for me. We was able to walk through streets that normally you would not. You know, um, and of course, there's always things happening in the backgrounds and in the darkness of uh, any type of activity. And so that's why you do have to be always considering, OK, you know, uh, what's going on around me? Who, you know, so who knows what was happening to, to you know, because I think a lot of people feel as though that they're going to maybe lose their jobs over this and you know and know some, for something that was um you know it was a cultural event I remember having a great time I remember going to clubs I remember going to house parties I remember me like I said I met some met someone I can't, I can't remember their name but you know I just because let me tell you what happened I, you know I go into a club you know it's packed with people and everything and I'm kind of standing around the bar because I, I did feel like I was out of place because of the group I was with you know, we didn't get along, like I said, but they were, they were my transportation. So I had to, I had to behave, you know, and there were so many things I wanted to say to some of these people in this group and this clique that I was with, but I, I wanted to get home. <laughs> and that's why I pay attention to the company you keep, you know, make sure you have alternative transportation if you need so need to, and make sure you have uh so that's why I always want to control where where I'm where we're going I want to drive sorry you know so did I know that because I know I'm going to take care of me so that means I'm going to take care of my passengers so I do remember meeting someone they were working at a uh, they, they had a great position in the city uh, you know close to um, um, you know the, the administrators of the city and this person was very you know you know I remember it they approached me and they were attempting to have a conversation with me. I was attempting to have a conversation with them. And then I made the group, one in particular, jealous. Jealous. So that's why I say, you know, I thought everything was fine. I thought, hey, I could go to these kind of events with someone, even though I, we were dating, but we were not, you know. So, but this caused a lot of problems. This person interfered with that, kept blocking my attempts to conversate, conversate with this person, you know, this person was beautiful, by the way, you know, I, you know, really attractive. And so maybe that's what it was. But, um, my point is that I just remember great events, great, uh, great flow. You know, there was nobody fighting. Nobody was threatened. You know, there was not, nobody was, they may have had guns on them, but I, I don't think they were, no, I don't, I just don't think that, that was going on because I think back then, it was just a different vibe. It was a different atmosphere. It was a di you know, and so it's not the same as now. No, there's no way in hell. I'm just being real honest that I would go to any house parties or clubs and that kind of. I mean, I'm over that. Uh, I'm over it um, because I'm telling you, if you go out into these certain environments, someone's gonna have a weapon on them. You just need to be uh, expecting of that. And so that's why a lot of people, I just don't understand why a lot of people get, get all worked up when they go into a club and, 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 and tensions, you know, you bump into someone, then that sets people off. You know, you can't even walk anywhere and that's, you know, and it sets somebody off, you know, that Aaron Hernandez, remember him, that football player, how he would go into a club, you know, like, I guess he thought he was the shit. I don't know, but this is what was, um. Uh, uh, reported that he would go in a club and if somebody mistakenly bumps him and drops their their 
um, drink on them. Okay, all right, it's time to, you know, they, they, what they do now is take weapons out and boom. And that's the end of it. That's this, that's how our interpersonal, tr uh, our interpersonal relationships have, you know, have uh, degenerated to a, I mean, it's just not safe. For me, you know, I'm older, you know what I mean? And so I say this to the young people, you are delusional. If you believe that going to these clubs and bars and parties, that no one's going to have a weapon there, you know. I mean, and that you may be caught in, in, the, in the crossfire of that. Maybe not now, but, you know. So things do come back to haunt people. You know, whatever you were doing at Freak Neat during those times, you thought nobody was paying attention, you thought nobody was watching because that was the last thing we were even concerned about, you know. And now all of a sudden, you a lot of people realize, what? They have filming and, and um, again, the executive producers, what is their, what is their t intention and purpose of this video, uh, documentary? Is it to harm people? Or is it just, uh, you know, are you expressing the value of it? Because like I said, it started with college students that went to uh, predominantly black colleges in Atlanta. And then it started spreading out to people all over the all over the world, I guess. I don't know. I knew people were coming in from all walks of life. Uh, you know, more more so all walks of uh, states. And you know, it was. I thought it was a great event. I I don't remember any need to be concerned about my safety during that time. Uh, it was just you know, you you know, you get with the wrong group of people. You know, and I'm trying to think. You know, I, I do remember coming there again. And meeting up with people there. And I had a great time with that too. Running all over the place. <laughs> going to club to club, bar to bar. So my point is, uh, counter this. If, if you know, counter it and say, hey, you know, what do you remember about it? I may be too late. I hope people, because I don't know what people are doing on Instagram. I don't use, look, I got myself signed up on all of these social media platforms. But I, I don't know how anyone, because as a matter of fact, I got got some webinars later. I just don't know how anyone can keep up with it. I, I mean, at least I cannot. I, I, and I admit that. I cannot keep up with all this social media, you know, the social media platforms. That's why, um, that's why I know I'm, I've recovered because I used to be able to sit and watch all of these programmings and reality shows for hours and hours and hours. Now I can barely sit and watch them for 10 minutes five minutes. I, I'll see a documentary and I said, okay, wow, I, I seem in, in, interested in it. It's about an hour, hour long and I can barely sit there for five minutes. So I click off of it. I can't do it anymore. You know, so again, um, you, everything you do now, you may, I told you they have this software and the technology Everything you say on these cell phones, say on your laptop, say in your own environment that you think is private, nothing is private. Nothing has ever been. I'm sure there were surveillance. Like I said, there's satellites out there. They call them surveillance satellites. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? And it says it's a surveillance satellite. That means they're watching us. Everything we do, they can zoom in on your property. So do you think they not have technology to, to penetrate that and come into your house? Well, they can via your laptops, your televisions, any type of electronic device. Sometimes even from your, your own um, fire alarms. They have the technology to hear everything. If they want to, they can see everything. So none, and, and at the same time, on a, on a whole universal um, scale of things, everything's documented it too. In our storage banks, like I said, each individual human being has a storage bank. Okay, so in the future, if you can, if you, if you elevate yourself in the proper manner, you'll be able to time travel. But time travel is not for everybody. 
It's only for those certain ones that, that raise their vibration enough, evolve their conscience enough, and boom, boom, boom. It's, it's unlimited to what you can do. You remember, there's always a past, a now, and a future. Right now, we're preparing, we're cultivating our future. So I'm pretty sure people back in the Freak Meat era and legacy probably are probably don't even remember what they were doing. Probably don't remember if they were booty shaking and you know. And then they now today they're probably a high influencer uh, and they're contradicting everything. You know, their behaviors and actions are coming back to bite them and expose them. And I and I think that's. Um, that's the that's part of trial and error and mistakes. Okay, so some of these, uh, and so that's probably what it is. Some of these high influencers, celebrities, or whatever, you know, probably remember some of their behaviors and actions, and now they're they're attempting to squash it as it never existed. And so apparently somebody was there filming all of it. That's a possibility, but you need to consider that's happening now as well. So you get on the internet, you get on in front of televisions and social media, internet, whatever, you know, spouting out contradictions and lies. And so now it's bothering certain people, I guess, right? That's that's possibly why there were lawsuits and stuff. Because I remember they were talking about Freak Me. Uh, I, I thought it was about a year ago or so. I thought the movie, I thought the documentary was out. And I didn't hadn't heard anything else otherwise. So now apparently, you know, there was a, there was some, hold up on it you know certain faces are recognizable in those videos apparently and their behaviors and actions is recognizable so now they want to come in and you know i would just say that's part of trial and error and mistakes you know why attempt to bury it even further you know and so that's that's possibly where where all the tension is because now these uh so-called like i said high influencers making all this money you know, projecting a certain type of lifestyle. Now it's all coming back to haunt them, possibly. I don't know. So to my young people, again, you know, um, you had to be there, you know. And when I was there, I, I had a great time. I made, met great people. Even though I was in a group, the first group of people, there was tension there. Okay, that's why I decided when I came back uh, before it ended, I was by myself driving my own vehicle, got my own hotel, not sharing hotels with no, I don't share hotels with no one unless we are intimately involved. Other than that, no, 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 it's not happening. Um, and so I had just had to go through trials and errors and make mistakes, but, it, I, but I had fun nonetheless. I met some great people, but I just don't remember too many of their faces. Cause like I said, that one person I met, they had a, 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 a you know, they, they had a, great position, you know, with the, the administration of the city, um, you know, because of all the interference when I was attempting to talk to this person, I couldn't, I couldn't because I was, I had to get back home. And back then it was, it's just different. You know, it's different. So come forward, tell us what you remember about that particular time in your life and come out and admit, you know, about, and stop with the hypocrisy, number one. Uh, stop with the hypocrisy. Get off the high horse, as they say. And uh, admit that you may have engaged in certain behavior that, that you are now condoning. And you are regretful, I guess, or feeling guilt. I don't know what, what's going on. Something's going on about this documentary. Uh, I doubt I'll watch it. I don't really need to. <laughs> I'm not saying... I'm not saying I need to, but because like I said, I don't have a streaming service right now. I'm, I'm, I'm about other business. You know, my business is not the same. It's not business as usual for me. So I've uh, moved on from those kind of, uh, you know, and that's why you got to pay attention to your behaviors and actions. Okay. And make sure you support the path you're leading and that you're not, you know, just saying what everybody wants to hear and projecting yourself as something that you're not. I, I want those to step, you know, to reap what they've sown because of the impact that you're causing 
young people by not walking the talk, okay, and just projecting yourself as this whatever. So apparently it's involved, this is disturbing men and women. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I thought I'd share that. Like I said, my Freak Meek experience was, I, I had a good time. I don't remember any, any time ever feeling unsafe in Atlanta. I would not do, like I said, I don't do clubs and stuff and hanging out with crowds anymore. I just don't. Um, I, I might be there. I'll be there on a perimeter basis, meaning I'm just kind of looking around, trying to figure out this or that and the other, but I, I don't participate in, in large groups of um, activities in, anymore because you can guarantee, I would say 100%, the, the citizens are carrying weapons that attend these events. And then you got children there. People people think they should bring their children everywhere. Okay, I mean that's that's a choice. You know they don't have a problem bringing their children to house parties and bringing their children to clubs and you know and and picnics and I mean that's adult oriented. You know it's for the adults. I don't remember children running around. When I used to visit these events, they had babysitters to take care of these children. So I don't know what the video is going, the documentary is going to reveal, but time does reveal. You know, um, you, you know, your your past does catch up to you. Okay, um, cause and effect is real. You know, you do reap what you've sown in your behaviors and actions. So consider that the next time you decide to go booty shaking. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to head and send peace and love right now. I got some webinar classes to attend in a few, you know, just building my uh, knowledge base, you know, and learning via self-education. And this is going to be a lifelong event for me. And I am, I'm enjoying it for the most part, even though sometimes I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains, you know, own up to your mistakes so that you can evolve your consciousness. Peace and love, and trust me, I'll be back.